That's right, today's video is not about vinyl floor installation, it's about your subfloor. Because the truth of it is, if you have old, nasty subfloor, you don't have to remove it. You can actually add a new layer on top, which is what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to show you how to do it, save you a lot of time and money. Cheers. So I'm going to be installing 5 8 plywood on this floor. We got to change out the trims and the baseboard, put in a new flooring. But I wanted to show you some of these tricks with working in the manufactured homes. The challenges we're going to run into uh, seem to be new every day. And that's fine, because if you have to deal with challenges, then you can overcome them. And every time you overcome a challenge, you become more and more ferocious in your building skills. And it just fuels your toolbox to handle problems in the future. From the joint to the joint of this building material, it is four feet. Okay, great. But from the chalk line to the chalk line, the other joists are not on center. They're kind of close-ish. Right? So here's my challenge. If I take four by eight sheets of plywood and I want to go contrary to the joist because that's the strongest direction and the joists are running this way. So we're going to go this way. I don't want to turn this into uh, a work of art where I've got to be measuring off from the joint to the wall and make everything perfect because honestly, I'm just putting a floating floor on. It's not going to be tile or anything serious. So what I'm going to do, since I only have the four foot joints that I can rely on, I'm going to take my subfloor and I'm going to just uh, drop it on the four foot line. Okay? And here's why. If this is a floor and it should be flattened is, as I get to the outside, you can see that gap. Right? I don't know if that camera angle allows you to see that gap, but my finger goes underneath that. So 10 inches, and I got pretty thick fingers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just square off. I'm going to cut pieces to fill. I'm going to keep my life simple. And I'm just going to install this over top of the existing. In other areas, we've got weak spots. We've got holes. We've got inconsistencies. And trying to remove all the subfloor makes no sense. So we're going to keep our life simple. The uh, screws we're going to be using here, guys, are two-inch construction screws. That's right. On this channel, you've heard me mention all the time, um, uh, subfloor screws. What the heck is a subfloor screw down here in the US? Remember, this home is down here in Florida. We're on a work visa, so things are changing. We're actually using materials that everybody in the South is using. We're going to get rid of a lot of confusion on this channel and create a lot more. <laughs> I love it. I go to the store and I'm like, guys, I need screws. They've got drywall. They've got outdoor. They've got deck screws. And they got construction screws. That's it. You don't have subfloor screws here. I'm like, okay. Well, I mean, I understand they're basically a construction screw. That's fine. Here's the thing. This is a two inch screw. It's got a smooth shaft on the top of the head and it fits a T25 bit, which comes in the bucket if you need one. And here is how we're going to do this. Okay. I'm going to throw a screw in the corner and attach it to the joist. And we're going to bury it till the head is underneath the wood. Just. Okay? This thickness is thick enough to go through the subfloor, through the next subfloor. I get about three quarters into the joist, which is plenty strong. And it gives me a bit of a guarantee because if they're running electrical or plumbing, they're not going to put it right at the top of the joist. So, wherever this line is, I'm going to drop a screw. And I'm going to go just below the surface and stop. That way I can sleep at night knowing I'm not going to cause any more damage, increase the scope of work. I don't have to worry about being 16 on center. I have to worry about finding the joist. This gets rid of all my squeaks, all my concerns, gives me a solid structure that I can stand on because this crap material that's wedged in between here and the joist, it's going to transfer the load just fine. It's stuck there, it's not moving, okay? So even if it's soft in between the two, I've got a subfloor now that is standard thickness in every new home construction that is not slab on grade. So 16 on center, give or take, with a 5 8 plywood, that's all we need to do. I'm not going to try to re-engineer the house. I'm not going to try to say, hey, <laughs> this is a great time for overkill. Because remember, we're working on a budget here. And if I go overkill in everything I do, I'm going to go over killing my budget. So 
every 16 inches on the edges, every 16 on the joists, and we're going to drop this sucker in in no time. Of course, that means I have to undercut all the doors, and that's fine. I'd rather undercut all the doors than spend an entire two or three days ripping out all this subfloor and then reinstating a brand new one. That just doesn't make any sense. That's a lot of garbage. That's a lot of extra work and a lot of extra time. And to be honest with you, the house value does not sustain putting that kind of time and energy and money into it. So we are keeping this simple. And once I finish off the rest of this room, <laughs> I'm gonna have a solid surface that I can work on. And then we're gonna get out all the big guns and start working on refinishing. I'm gonna just show you a couple of tricks now with dealing with subfloor. Room's almost done. I've got to do this corner. It's, it's a little maddening to me, but the, the cable that comes to the house comes to the master bedroom first, and then it's split, and this line ends up going to two other locations, one in the front room and one in the other bedroom. I mean, I don't know why I would think that they would go to the living room first, but I guess one place is just as good as another. But it is a crawl space, and I don't like crawling around, so I am going to be very careful not to damage any of this. But I want to make sure that my subfloor that I'm putting in um, has some integrity in this corner because I can foresee people using furniture and we don't want to not have plywood around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it and I'm going to drill two holes. I bought some Diablo speedboard bits. These are amazing, okay? They fit in my one drill that I have with me that is starting to give up the ghost. It's just getting old like me, I guess. I always use a nice sharp knife to cut these open. This packaging is more dangerous than the tools you use on the job site, I'm telling you. This one cable is kind of comes together. And is it going to be big enough to cover? Yeah, we can squeeze that in. All right, good. We'll use one drill bit. We're going to measure to this seam. Okay, that is the middle of a floor joist. There's no sense going any further than that because we're going to be adding flooring and we're going to be adding baseboard. So to go to that seam, it looks like a 48 piece. It is perfect. So I got a 48 by 48, nice and simple. This is gonna work just marvelous. This is why you need something that's square, guys. 43 and a quarter. To the middle of that one. This one is gonna be 46. And then we're gonna get the measurement off the other side as well for both of these holes. 46 and an eighth, that is spooky. All right and 45 and a quarter. So now I can translate that information. This is factory edge. That's just nasty to look at, isn't it? All right, all right. That'll be better. So my holes are gonna go somewhere here and here, okay? So now we take that information, 43 and a quarter, 46 and an eighth, okay? And then 46 and an eighth, and then 45 and a quarter, second center. Let's get this in here. Let's get this one in here. It's nice if they're super long. This makes this a lot easier, actually. This lined up. Come around the other side. A bit of a pinch here. There. Okay. And remember, we are screwing right through the floor, subfloor, the subfloor, and then into the joist. Now we can push all that excess back because when we're installing the flooring, we're not going to want to have 400 feet of cable here. But in the meantime, I need to have this connected because this is the internet for the house. It's also the power that I need to be doing my live shows. So the single wire is the cable power coming in. I just don't know which one of these goes to the front room versus the other bedroom. So we'll just put them both on. <laughs> 
So one of the really fancy things about these manufactured homes, none of the door hinges are mortised. You can see that these all sit on the surface. Even this plate sits on the surface. Which, you know what? In the grand scheme of things, when you're dealing with a hollow door, it's not that big of a problem. Well, those, some of those screws are really interesting. Um, <laughs> it's only carrying, what's this door? Maybe 30 pounds? Not even? There's four screws carrying 30 pounds. That really, you know, shouldn't be an issue. <sighs> Make life a lot simpler if all doors are not mortised like that. These are hollow, but anyway, there's two things we got to do to prep because I'm trying to bring the subfloor from here. There's a joist here. You can see the red line. The next one, I don't know where it is. It's underneath that flooring somewhere. And I can't install the flooring in this room unless I have subfloor through the door. And I don't want to have a weak spot by stopping in the middle of, a, of the original subfloor where there's no joist. So I actually have to remove the flooring in the hallway now. And there's no easy way to do that. It's going to be messy. This is a construction zone. So <laughs> let's just get the... Uh, Let's get the big tools out. And it's just a vinyl tongue and groove lock. Shouldn't take much. So you peel that up. How much of a hole did you repair here? Okay. Oh my. Somebody did a majority of the hallway. Huh. Well, isn't that interesting? So that changes the story on this house a little bit, doesn't it? Because this was carpet. So whoever put down the vinyl knew they were having subfloor issues. Peeled up the old one and put this plywood in. But it's soft down here. So they stopped somewhere in the hallway. Oh, wow. Wow. Vinyl flooring has certain installations um, environments, shall we say, where it's starting to fail. The floor I'm standing on is only three years old. I want you to check this out right here where I'm walking. Okay, look at that. Look at that floor move. All right. Now, when it first happened, we're like, okay, soft spot. Uh, how bad can this be? <laughs> and then we started doing the demolition. In Florida, you have two climates, warm and dry and hot and humid. What we want to consider is the following. During the warm and dry period, having a vinyl floor doesn't affect the house. But during the hot, humid period, we want to stop and go, okay, let's put our building science hats on. If something in this building gets wet, how does it dry? Well, in the summertime, you're running air conditioning constantly, okay? So the air inside this building envelope is always quite dry. So if water gets into the building, as long as it can make its way into the building space, past the surface of the walls, right? Which is why going from oil to latex made a lot of sense because moisture could pass through a latex wall without damaging anything and, and relative humidity would take care of any moisture that got into your building. But underneath this crawl space, it was just hot, humid air. So we have to stop and think, wait a minute, if I'm putting vinyl on top of my subfloor and the subfloor is pulling humid air from underneath, where's all that water going? We're talking six months of the year. It's just going into that subfloor. It's got nowhere to get out. All right. That's a serious problem. Point is this. Now when I'm walking around, I'm identifying soft spots on the floor. Okay. That were probably already soft, but we never noticed on the first trip through. And I was looking for problems, right? When we bought this place. But now there's soft spots and it's still winter time. It's not even hot and humid yet, but this material had soaked up so much moisture that it was weakened because it's not plywood. Okay. Well, now we know. It's just no accountability for integrity these days. So they knew they had a problem. They patched the worst part and left the rest to rot underneath a brand new floor. Whew. Wow. That's just nasty. That is just, that's just sad. Somebody probably made a, uh, an economic decision. And it wasn't a good one. Uh, oh well, no big surprise, right? 
you know, let me know in the comment section if you think I'm being weird. If you were the contractor and the client said, hey, I can't give you ten or fifteen thousand dollars to put new subflooring in. Uh, can you just patch the bad spots? Would you do that? Knowing that the client was going to end up falling through the floor in another part of the house sooner or later anyway. I just feel like the conversation should have been <laughs> you're throwing good money down the drain by getting this job done. Okay, so here's the good point. The good news is this is plywood. It's 5 8 It's just like we're using. So I can make my joint finish anywhere here. I was, uh, was going to try to find the joist. And I can. It's right here. There's one here. And I'm just guessing because I'm not seeing enough fixed fasteners. Maybe I can see through the gap here. Yes, I can see the gap. Okay. Now remember, this is uh, double wide, which means it's two houses stuck together to make the whole home. So this is where the trailers meet. And this is where we got five aids meeting up with the old material again. If I sound exasperated, because I am, <laughs> I, I hate seeing things like this. Anyway, I understand how they happen. Um, my job here is to teach you a couple of things. One, what we would do if this wasn't plywood, okay? Because that other subfloor wasn't structural. So I'd be looking for joists, okay? Uh, this joist. Remember, this flooring came right up to here. This is the old flooring line. So I wasn't sure where the next choice was. And what I wanted to do is, I'm basically gonna measure a piece of plywood that fits this whole area. And I was gonna make a shape like this. Comes around the door, okay? Same thing on this side. And I was gonna make that puzzle piece to go from floor joist to floor joist, okay? That's the plan. And the way you work that is you cut it in half and you slide one piece in and slide the other piece in. It's a little bit of measuring, and that's not a big issue. What you need is you got to get a square, you throw it on here, you draw your center line, and you measure from that line all your different other points to get all these different points of measurement. That's pretty straightforward and simple. Then you can cut it, drop it in, and again, you have a little mercy because you don't have to go right up tight to the wall, right? The other thing we're gonna do is, because we're making a change to upgrade all of these door casings, and we're gonna put baseboards in instead of pieces of cord around, we also wanna remove that from the equation here, all right? So that we're not trying to cut around all of those details as well. All right, oh, of course, use lots of nails. All right, so now, once that's done, I can measure something that would look like this. Okay, and come right across the corner up to about the door, and that's what I was looking to do. Something like that. Plus, I had to finish this line on the next floor joist, which was over here somewhere. But because I'm on structural plywood now, I'm gonna stop at the door, make my life simple, come over to this door, I'm gonna do the puzzle piece, give you an idea of what we're up against. But this is a proper way to add subflooring around an existing door. You don't need to cut the jams out of the way. What we're gonna do is, when we get to the flooring section of this video, we're going to cut back these little pieces here and install the flooring right tight to the jam. Okay, remember it's vinyl, so it's not gonna expand and contract. You're not gonna run into issues. And we'll leave the subfloor a little bit shy, but put the vinyl right up nice and tight. Finish this piece here with a little bit of colored caulking and then put, finish this piece here with the casing and the baseboard covering all that gap. So it'll, it'll get a really nice finished look, all right? That's the goal anyway, to try to make it look pretty, all right? Here we go, let's just finish ripping all this out and then we can Go ahead and measure that. Man, that is frustrating. There we go. Get underneath. I guess for me, I'm, now that I'm here, I'm just really curious as to, did they run that plywood? No, that's the particle board again. Or is it? No, they did. They changed the plywood in the bathroom too. That's actually really interesting. If the whole bathroom's been changed, we'll find out later on, because we're gonna get to this bathroom later. If that whole bathroom's been changed out, um, then I'll be stopping the subfloor here and transitioning down into the bathroom. I'm not gonna bother putting new plywood on top of new plywood if I don't have to. That'll be uh, possibly handy dandy. But, like I said, until we see it, we don't know. Because, eight feet away, they didn't change the plywood out, 
and there's a bunch of bad spots opening up the floor, causing damage. So I don't know what they were thinking. They, were, they weren't thinking about the whole job, that's for sure. Man, you put down a floor, you want more than three years out of it. Wow. Beware, when you're doing DIY projects, you have to start from the beginning. And that is making sure that you're building on something that's structural, that's gonna last longer than you are. And that's not the case here, which is sad. All right, let's get to measuring. I need my square. Ah, uh, here we go. First thing we need is um, an arbitrary line here. Some sort of measurement that comes off of this trim that's the narrowest part of this part of the room. And we're gonna call that 18 inches. And we're gonna put that right there. Okay. We'll come off this side because this has got a bit of an issue. We're not gonna get a square line. My bad. So there we go. We'll go 18 inches from here and a hair. And that'll be our cut line. Okay. Center, we're calling that 18 inches uh, from that side, okay? So this measurement from here to here is gonna be 18, and this measurement, and this is how we do it, is gonna be seven, sorry, it'll be 18 as well. I actually picked the center of the wall. That's just absolutely crazy. Now, from door jam to door jam out here, I think it's gonna be a little bit wider. Yeah, that's 40. Okay, so this one is 40. And so that really makes things interesting. Now we have to get these points here, okay? In order to do that, we're just gonna extend this line all the way out and then measure from the line back to all those points. All right, so we'll bring, I didn't take the casings off here, did I? Now, we're gonna bring the flooring to here. It's still 18 and it's close enough Okay, so we'll still call that 18. That will stay the same. The door itself, we're gonna come up to this space here. That one's 13. We'll call that one 14. All right, so this is 14. This, I'm gonna go 12 and 7 eighths because it was just a little tight. Okay, so now from here, 21. 24 and 3 quarters. This is this line. 21, 24 and 3 quarters. And we'll measure the same off over here. Similar, 21, 25. 21 and an eighth. 25. And then my total length is going to be, we're going to go to 30 inches. Okay? So the piece of plywood I'm working with is going to be a 30 by 40. I'm gonna draw that center line on, okay? I don't even know if it's center. Let's try this. 21 and a half. Okay. 21 and a half. And 18 and a half. Okay, so it's not center. It's center in there, but it's not center out here. That is why we have to start with a 40 by 30. And then we have to get this intersection on there. We're gonna draw this line on our cut piece of plywood and then we'll draw all of our measurements out according to that. And then we're gonna cut it in half and drop it in. And with a little bit of luck, it should be perfect the first time. Perfect every time. So here we go, that's my 40. I'm just feeling like that square isn't very square anymore. <laughs> It'll be close enough. All right, so now I got my 40 and my 30 and my Center line here was 21 and a half, right there. And I'm working off the factory edge here, so I can try to keep this as square as possible. Now, let's put this on the line. This is the bedroom, and I'm in the hall, so I've got the same situation as I was taking all my measurements. So I know I'm coming across 18. I'm coming down 21 and an eighth. I'm coming down 12 and 7 eighths off that line. That represents my door jam. 25 on the other side. It's all the way across to there. And that's three and a half. Now the other side. This should be 18 as well. Pretty darn close. And we're coming down 21. Yeah, so this is the 40. This is the same wall in the other room, but the inside measurement is a little bit skinnier than in the hallway. So we're gonna make an account for this because I don't wanna be running into issues. Now, coming from that line, I was over here at 14. And then the next line down here is 24 and three quarters. 
to my 40. So whenever you're in doubt and you got a fancy puzzle piece, just draw up an arbitrary line on a whole number, makes it help. Draw that square across and then use this. Factory edge against factory edges, okay? Always drawing off that square, get all your measurements. Now all we gotta do is cut this bad boy. All right. And <laughs> now we find out if I know what I'm doing. <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to start this way, okay, and we'll slide this one in, all right, and it's on that line, that's looking pretty good so far, we'll slide this one in, there's nothing to shake a stick at, brilliant, okay, the only thing I'm not crazy about is the gap here, knowing that I'm trying to catch a joist, because I'm picky and I've got a little bit of room to maneuver, I am going to make this adjustment right here, and take off that quarter inch just so that I can close this gap and stay nice and tight and square. All right. Taking the time to be picky like this is the difference between a job that really performs well or a warranty road, warranty issue down the road. There we go. Now that is going to screw together really nice and tight. Oh, beautiful. Perfect every time. That pretty much uh, finishes it for the subflooring. Uh, guys, remember, since the joists are running this way, I've only got to add screws every 16 inches on those joist lines, okay? So what I'm going to do, just make my life easier, I'm going to identify that joist line, and I'm going to mark it on the board. Mark it on the wall. Make it easy to connect those dots once you get all your subfloor in place. So here we go, right? Nice and simple. And then now that I'm on the subflooring over here, that's just about laminating it together and uh, problem solved.